Today, we're going to look at Control Tower, a way to level up the management and governance of your AWS account and organization. Uh, it's a process that takes about less than an hour to set up. Uh, and this video is intended for, uh, to be approachable for people with even just a few months of, of AWS experience. So what is Control Tower? Uh, essentially, it is a self-service tool uh, that you can deploy from an AWS master account uh, to manage organizations using best practice. So the first question might be, isn't this a little bit like landing zone? Uh, and it kind of is. Uh, as with many things AWS, there are multiple ways to skin the proverbial cat. Uh, landing Zone is a much more complicated beast and is offered through things like ProServe and Amazon Partners for that reason. Uh, it provides a lot more flexibility, but with that there's significant more complexity. So Control Tower is much more of an out-of-the-box service. So if you're setting up an account for the first time, even for a mid-sized organization, Control Tower will meet 99% of use cases. Uh, in my opinion, if you're a team of one through to an org of 100, Control Tower should be part of your tool set. So what is using Control Tower like? Well, it creates a central place for administrators to manage accounts, uh, perform actions such as generating sub-accounts with a vending machine, managing billing, uh, setting up guardrails, restrictions, managing users, and it handles the minutiae of logging for audit processes and stuff like that. So sure, you could achieve a similar objective using standard AWS organizations and I am fresh out of the box. Uh, however, with this setup, uh, you also enforce best practice um, for operating accounts and security by default. So again, this leads to things like logging, audit trails, uh, users and permissions across accounts have also got a lot more fine grain control thanks to using single sign-on. And the guardrails prevent and alert administrators to undesirable actions such as public S3 buckets, unattached EBS volumes. Um, there's a lot more you can do with guardrail uh, down the track. And the idea behind this is setting up guardrail to begin with so that in six months time, when you need to add more controls or features, you've already got a good foundation. So long story short, it abstracts away all the boring administration tasks of creating a well-architected infrastructure so you can focus on creating better services for your customers. So what does this organization thingamabob do, Hickey? Well, a quick primer on organizations for those who have not used them before. Uh, when you create a shiny new account on AWS, you create it using a root user. Uh, and if you've been a good little cloud engineer, uh, you turned on access to billing for IAM users and the associated roles. Uh, created an IAM admin account for yourself and promptly forgot all about the root account. Um, this account is your master account in AWS vernacular. So best practice is not to deploy any resources in the master account. It simply acts as a place to consolidate billing and user administration. So where do we create those actual resources? So this is where organizations come into play. They're fully featured AWS accounts, just like the master, however they belong within the master's organization and administered by it. So notably, this means billing is centrally consolidated. And typically, what you want to do is you'll have IAM users in the master that will assume a role to get into sub-accounts. So now we have this sub-account where we may choose to deploy resources. In a larger organization, the account structure can often look a bit different. So in this case, we have separate accounts for development, testing, production. You might have a sandbox. You might have all four of these for each team doing a different business purpose. So you can end up with a lot of differential, uh, different accounts and things like that. And you can often end up producing them and even destroying them uh, in fairly rapid succession as you might want to roll something up to do some testing. But then you want to make sure that all the resources are deleted so you might destroy that whole account uh, to make sure everything's turned off. So getting started, as with all things AWS, uh, the best practice is to jump in uh, and give it a try. So costs are minimal, uh, but there is a few gotchas. Most notably, uh, when you configure 
uh, the account vending machine to create a public subnet, it'll automatically result in setting up a NAT gateway in each account, and that will cost you a minimum $30 a month to maintain in each account. So if you don't need public, which you can probably get away with, especially if you're a small organization or on an as-needed basis, uh, you're best not to configure that. Other than that, uh, account charges are fairly non-existent uh, compared to the cost of the resources you're deploying. Uh, and this will put you in a good posture for future expansion. There's a few example costs in there for small organizations to medium. Uh, and a lot of this is taken from the documentation, so you will want to have a bit of a look in that. So what are we going to be doing? Uh, so I'm going to be working for a shiny new account. I'm going to go actually start as a root user because I'm going to use single sign-on instead of I am to manage my users in this case. Um, control Tower can be deployed in an existing account um, and you can uh, enroll existing uh, organizations into organizational units. That is beyond the scope of this video, uh, but you can do that if you want to. We're going to need three email addresses, one for the root account, as well as two for the automatically generated sub accounts. So this is one for the audits, uh, for the audit account, sorry, and one for the logging account. Uh, you're also going to want to set up accounts now for any other resources you want to deploy. So in my example, I'm going to be wanting to set up a prod, dev, and test environment as well. So that's six emails you're going to need. Uh, in my case, I use G Suite. Uh, which means that I can create uh, Google Groups for each of these that will give me an email alias, and then I can provide uh, access to that to those resources, those those root email addresses later on, if I need to add new, other administrators uh, down the track. All right, let's jump in. I'm going to jump over to the console and we'll dig into setting up this account. Okay, so here we are in our shiny new AWS account. I'm logged in as the root user. I've gone through and I've enabled billing for IAM and other and other users, sorry. Uh, and what we're going to get into now is we're going to get into Control Tower. So, as you can tell, I've already been looking at it today. Uh, we're going to set up a landing zone. Now, I'll say it's pretty straightforward. I did run into a problem the first time I set this up. Uh, the system rolled back and it worked from there, so we're all good. So I'm in my home region, I'm from Perth, Western Australia, so I'm using uh, APAC Sydney. Uh, you can see the master account is already in there, please don't go and spam me. But also what I need to do now is I need to set up accounts for the log archive and the audit account. So I've already created all my email addresses, so I'm just going to go and copy those across. When I find my mouse, there we are. So that is the audit one. This is the one for the logging. Obviously, you kind of used these before. Hence, you can check that it's, it's actually looking at it. So, service permissions. It needs to create a bunch of roles. This is all just stuff you click through, check it out. Uh, guidance. Set up landing zone. That is it. We're literally gonna off. We're gonna go set it up. Now we wait. And wait. And wait. Wait some more. We, ooh, there we go. Alright, let's make that a bit viewable. There we are. So, our landing zone is being set up. So you can see here what it's trying to go through. Set up guardrails and the other bits and pieces. I'm going to go through now. I'm going to go back to my emails. Uh, I'm going to check that out to make sure that I agree to all the accounts and I validate them and that type of thing for those two ones we've set up. And once they're validated, this should only take a few more minutes. Okay, so we're a few minutes in now, uh, more like 10 minutes. I've had a chance to grab some noodles, put on it. It's got a bit cold in here, so I put on my hoodie. So you can see now though that we're actually increased. We've actually got two organizational units up. We've got three accounts set up. And 15 of the about 20 guardrails that go in place are now configured. So the process really just ticks along in the background. There is a couple of things you need to do. You need to go check your uh, authorization emails for your new account. So you can see our new ones for AWS audit and the log archive down here. So I've gone to my emails and I've validated those emails. 
I've also gone through and I've checked off SNS. There's a whole heap of SNS topics that are set up. I've gone through and I've made sure that I subscribe to all of those SNS emails that came through. Aside from that, it's still a case of sitting and waiting. Uh, one thing I should have mentioned earlier that, that can be quite important is this is only available in specific regions. So AP Southeast 2, so Sydney, uh, as well as a couple of, so USD 1, USD 2, I think. Um, I'll double check, I'll put some notes down the bottom. Uh, but keep in mind there's only some specific regions, notably some of the, the more common regions uh, such as Singapore are not available. Um, in Europe, I believe it's only Ireland that's available. So they are still in the process of rolling this out, but to keep that in mind. Now we wait a bit longer. So we've now set up our account. You have to excuse the dog is snoring away in the corner. So he's not at all fussed about this. So what we've got now is we've got our account set up. We've got three organization units, three accounts, 20 guardrails and two detective guardrails. And what I've also gone and done is I've set up another organizational unit. So go to here, so add organizational unit. So these are the three that it sets up to begin with. Root, which was already there, Core, Custom, and Raw Matter. So Raw Matter is the one that I've just made. And I'll show you, this one is setting up at the moment. And you can see it's actually deploying more and more guardrails to this. So you can see there's one, one, two, three, about 10, 12 at the moment. If we go to the other accounts, so we go back to our organizational units, custom, and this is almost like a default space. You can see there's a couple in here as well. But really interestingly, as the dog snores away next to me, you can see our other accounts. So you can see those two special accounts that we set up. So log archive and audit, they're both in here as well. They've got all their guardrails set up. They've actually got further guardrails configured for them. So you can see disallow changes to SNS setup by control tower. So you can't delete things in here. You can't, you can restrict that. You disallow changes to SNS subscription set up by control tower. So someone can't come in and auditing and control and then change these settings. So we've got really good protections in there now to begin with. And this is all the type of stuff that is good practice, but it's possibly difficult to do or to know how to configure as even an experienced user, you might not have the time, or that just might not be your area of expertise. I'm more of a serverless guy myself. This is something that I'm really pleased that I can just automate and forget about. So we can look at it. With our control tower set up now, a bit of an overview of the guardrails and why we've actually gone to all this effort. You're gonna to wanna to have a look into a few other areas. You wanna have a look at the guardrails in a bit more detail and see what they do. And if there's any more you want to put in yourself, Keep in mind that if you were to add hundreds of them, there would be a billing effect there. The other thing you want to start playing with is the account factory. So that is, again, it's almost as easy as setting up Control Tower. It's literally just a few boxes with email addresses that you put in. But there's also the settings that you want to configure for your account factory. And the third thing that you're going to want to get some familiarity with is single sign-on. Single sign-on is a whole different way of working in the Amazon environment, particularly for people that are accustomed to using IAM previously. It makes life a lot easier and a lot more secure, but there's a few nuances to get accustomed to, especially with the CLI. So this is our account factory. We have a few options here. We can enroll an account, or we can change how we enroll accounts. Uh, so we're gonna go and edit the network configuration just so you can see what that is like. You can set here whether you have a public subnet provisioned. Now this is that thing I was warning about earlier that if you click this button to yes, you're gonna get charged at least $30 a month. Uh, assuming you use the resources for the whole month uh, for having a NAT gateway in each VPC. And this can be even worse because what will happen is if you select all of these regions for VPC creation, you're gonna create five NAT instances and NAT gateway per account. So you can charge yourself $150 a month uh, by turning this on and turning all these regions on. This also shows you the ones that are available. So there's US East, so North Virginia, Ohio, Oregon, Ireland, Sydney. I'm just doing Sydney. And also I like to change my CIDR range for my VPC for each account. 
personal preference thing. I'm, my expectation is this will make it easier down the track if I need to peer my VPCs. I might as well not have them automatically overlap a specific range. So I'm going to save that and I'm going to enroll a new account. And this is dead simple. Like it's literally almost like the previous one. You get this good look at me in profile as I copy my email address from here. I'm going to call this my prod account, so rm-prod. And it also asks you to set up a, another single sign-on email address uh, for this account. Personally, I don't see the value in this. I think you'll be setting up users and groups and we'll go into single sign-on as I mentioned in another video later. But why not? Let's just set it up anyway. And I'm going to put it into that separate raw matter organizational unit that I set up. You could just as easily use a standard custom one that comes by default. Enroll account. And now we wait. So this will deploy, it takes a little while. Again, you want to allow a half an hour for this to go through. More than enough time to go get a cup of tea. So this is Control Tower in a nutshell. Uh, super straightforward to get used with. It is one of those ones that once you set it up, as long as you avoid those couple of little tricks with VPCs, it's not really going to cost you anything, but it's going to set you up for success. Now, more self-help videos and uh, my random ramblings if you subscribe, like, all that sort of stuff. I really just do these for fun, so it's good to find out if they're useful for people.